Up until a few years ago, cars were basically analog devices. Now, they're kind of smartphones on wheels. Yeah, new technologies are bringing more capabilities and possibilities to the car. But new technologies also make things more complicated. Car manufacturers are good at manufacturing cars. But cars are a lot less mechanical these days, and they're a lot more software focused. And an OEM is not a software company. No, they need the help of a supplier. A company that lives and breathes software. And of course, the hardware that runs the software. Cars are changing. OEMs should do the same. I'm Nicole Scott. And I'm Don Dahlmann. We are both experts in the fields of technology and mobility. And today we're going to be taking a look at some of the technologies that we're going to need to drive the future of mobility forward. And for that, you need the right companies and the right people, like Thomas Dannemann from Qualcomm. I'm very excited about the automotive industry since I'm a child. I still remember the times when I was sitting on the back seat without wearing a seatbelt because there wasn't any. Then there was the introduction of the ABS systems or the airbag. Since I'm working, I was introducing multimedia systems to the car, and now I'm super excited to bring the autonomous driving technology into the cars. Until now, OEMs approach those new technologies by adding more and more CPUs into the car, and those CPUs are controlled by different ECUs. And this approach does not work anymore. Hardware and software need to be looked at together, holistically. In automotive, we have four product pillars. First is telematics. Telematics is the technology that connects the cars with the internet. Part of that is also the connectivity over Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, as well as cellular car-to-car -car communication. Second is digital cockpit. Digital cockpit is driving all the displays inside the car and is creating the user experience for the driver. Third will be autonomous driving technology, all the process technology that is needed to make autonomous driving happening. And the fourth technology is car to cloud business model, where we are offering new services and new business models to the OEMs and the car driver to upgrade their cars and keep them fresh with software and functions over time. With Qualcomm's car to cloud technology, we will enable customers to upgrade their systems being in the field. This is software-wise as well as hardware-wise. So we have the enablement to upgrade SOCs to provide more performance to customers. And through software upgrades, you can update functions of the car as well as make the software more reliable. And with those technologies, we can ensure that the car is always fresh. But why is it better to get the soft and the hardware from one external provider? They're viewing the car as a whole. It's a mobile device now. It's basically a smartphone on wheels. And they need to kind of give the car companies that fresh new perspective and give them the help they need in order to kind of move forward into the digital era. The chassis is digital now. The digital chassis is for us a new electronics architecture that the car industry will introduce with the electrical vehicles. We enable this way a centralized uh, architecture where we will have zones where we're collecting the sensor data and send the sensor data over to the central compute unit where we are doing the central processing of all the sensor data. One main part of the car of the future will be its ability for autonomous driving. And you need a car that has a very fast computer. A computer that can handle all the sensors and all the data and react in just milliseconds. A car needs hardware that ensures the safety of the passengers, not only now, but also in the coming years. Snapdragon Ride is our reference platform for autonomous driving developments. It contains the Snapdragon processors, which are very power efficient and providing high performance. So we have optimized accelerators for image processing, AI accelerations for CPU and GPU. We are leveraging the ARM ecosystem and building on a safe infrastructure to make sure that our processors and the whole system are safe. The Snapdragon Ride platform was introduced at CES 2020, and we can demonstrate highway pilot functions with that reference platform. And it's the enablement for OEMs and tier ones to build autonomous driving based on our silicon. 
These Snapdragon SoCs are fully scalable from an entry up to a premium tier. Uh, with our ADAS platform, for example, we can scale up from a 30 top system up to a 700 top systems. Uh, and this in a performance scope where we believe we can still uh, provide an air-cooled system. Uh, this will allow the customer to build very cost-efficient solutions from an L1 system up to an L3 and maybe even by doubling compute uh, to L4 and 5 systems. Companies like Qualcomm have so much knowledge to share and can provide help to OEMs. Holger Weiss, a successful founder of the automotive startup called German Labs, points out how important that can be. A fundamental issue lies in the, the way how OEMs, but also tier one, so if you want to so the automotive ecosystem still is uh, understanding innovation. There's a shift, a quantum leap, a shift of paradigm uh, of the know-how that counts into a vehicle. Uh, while it traditionally was hardware driven or uh, the majority was hardware, it's now software and computers. The advantage of the centralized platform is certainly first the hardware. So you have one hardware that you have to maintain and you can create scalability within one hardware. And the second item is the software. So you build one software that you're scaling across functions from entry up to premium, and you can reuse most of the software for the different platforms. The Sonal architecture is part of the digital chassis, and the Sonal architecture is used such a way that we have a collection of sensor data in the zones, and then we are routing those sensor data through high-speed buses to the central compute architecture. And within the central compute, we are doing all the processing of the sensor data to enable all the features that the user wants to see. This is the user experience as well as the autonomous driving. The autonomous driving can be realized with existing technologies today. However, what is missing is massively the software development and data deployment to ensure that the software uh, is made robust enough to sustain all the requirements. This is only possible if the cars have enough sensor data and the right data sensor set to realize L3 systems. The central compute architecture is part of our digital chassis. The Sonal hubs will collect all the sensor data within the car and stream those sensor data over high-speed buses to the central compute. Within the central compute, we will process the camera data, radar data, and other sensor data in a centralized fashion. That means you don't have to decide anymore whether your rear view camera is part of the IVI system or part of the ADA system. So you can use it in any domain to make sure you are successfully processing the data and the result remains visually visible for the customers, like a rear view camera, and this camera is being used as a compute vision part for your obstacle detection. It's becoming more and more clear that the hard and software of the car is becoming a major factor when people look to buy a new vehicle. It's no longer the engine. No, people make decisions based on what software they get, like we all do when we buy a computer, a smartphone or TV sets. And it's really important that this new technology is future-proof and scalable because manufacturers are going to need to have new ways to interact with their customers and to open up new streams of revenue. In order to bring products successfully to the road, you need to have a massive support infrastructure in place to help your customers and make sure that the feature plan and the rollout milestones they have are being fulfilled. With our technology, we help the customers to not only provide hardware, but also software components. Qualcomm's an interesting company because they have huge experience in rolling out wireless technology networks and 5G. And they've done it across various political environments and country standards. Yeah, and automotive it is as complicated, if not even more. And there are just a few companies that bring this expertise to the table. I'm Nicole Scott. And I'm Don Dahlmann. If you have a question, please leave us a comment. And while you're at it, subscribe to this channel and like this video.